Would you rather the favourite game of people in pubs since forever? The quandaries of this game are always tough, but the best would you rathers usually contain elements of disgust, sacrifice, sexual deviance and death. A bit like a chat with Jules, basically. And more often than not, end up with you fighting something. Nevertheless, some would you rathers can be carefully deduced using science and logic. And those are the ones that we're interested in. These are the real questions. With that in mind, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and these are eight tricky would you rathers answered by science. Number eight, have feet for hands or hands for feet? All right, this seems like a pretty obvious one to start due to the unimaginable inconvenience of having feet for f hands. However, consider a life spent walking on a pair of hands. Ugh. Our feet have adapted for walking by developing stiff ligaments in the middle, and this gives us balance and stability whilst providing walking efficiency too. Hands, on the other uh, hand, are designed for fine, delicate movements. They're certainly not robust enough to haul your great carcass around all day. All this said, though, feet for hands would well and truly suck. Verdict, hands for feet. Number seven, be blind or deaf. Unless you plan on developing some kind of superhero alter ego, neither of these options are exactly ideal. But if you were to have one of these conditions from birth, then it would be much better to be born blind. Language, far more than vision, is essential in the normal development of a tiny human. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Then again, an increasing amount of our communication in the modern world is becoming text-based bloody millennials. Being deaf and sighted would allow you to use messaging and the internet in general in relative normality. And you wouldn't have to listen to idiots at work talk bollocks all the time too, Adam Cleary. Plus, with advancements in medical science, cochlear implants could well restore your hearing far more effectively than the latest in artificial vision. Verdict, be deaf. Number six, face one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses in combat. Ah, a real classic would you rather. One of the best, and trust me, we'll get to number one. I went out and punched a horse for this entry, but that wasn't deemed scientific enough. So... An army of duck-sized horses would actually weigh more than one horse-sized duck, and this leads some people to plump for the horse-sized duck option. However, you have to take into account the fact that the mass of the duck-sized horse army would constantly decrease as you took each tiny horse out, which you could do relatively easily with a kick. You monster. Ducks have also been known to chase and bite humans when they're at their normal size, so a horse-sized duck is certainly less likely to be phased by little old you. And that's me not sleeping tonight. Verdict, a hundred duck-sized horses. Number five, fight a lion or a bear? Lion, every time. Number, oh, you want an explanation? Fine, let's show our working, The Revenant. More? <sighs> Grizzly and polar bears would kill a lion in virtually one swipe. Lions are pretty much apex predators on their home turf. That's only because there aren't any f bears around. In order to kill a bear, both you and a lion will need to get around the throat and asphyxiate it, you kinky bastard. A bear will simply swipe you out of the way, probably crushing your skull in the process. The bear is bigger, stronger, and more difficult to hurt. That said, if either of these animals decide to kill you, then that's probably what's going to happen. Verdict, fight a lion. Number four, be really short or really tall. As a man who towers over his colleagues and is constantly asked, what's the weather like up there? Ha ha ha, ha. I may be slightly biased, but some research has found that tall people might actually earn more than their more diminutive counterparts. Height has been linked to higher intelligence and better social skills, meaning that these people are more likely to succeed in their careers. However, it has been found that those with smaller bodies are less likely to suffer from chronic illness and have longer lifespans than their towering friends. Oh God, maybe I should get that rash checked. So, the tall people will live shorter but wealthier lives, while the short people will be healthier and live longer, with a lower chance of being successful. Verdict? What do you bloody think? Be really tall. Number three. 
have a constant pain or constant itch. Nobody likes to be in pain. However, there are some studies that suggest that patients with chronic pain actually experience an increase in the opioid receptors in the brain that allow us to cope with pain, and this can even increase the pain threshold. If you're itchy, the chances are that you'll just have to deal with it. As the Simpsons taught us, itching is followed by scratching. Chronic itching cannot be properly soothed by scratching, and this could even make the symptoms worse. Stop touching yourself, basically. Constant itching is also often linked with psychosis, and the itch-scratch cycle can literally drive you bonkers. Verdict, have chronic pain. Number two, burn to death or drown. Death by drowning is caused by asphyxiation as the water fills the lungs and cuts oxygen from the brain, which, as you may have guessed, is extremely painful. After this, however, the person will lose consciousness and near-drowning victims often report a sensation of peacefulness just before this happens. <sighs> Flames, on the other hand, will activate every nociceptor they come into contact with, causing sharp, excruciating pain. Ah! Cause of death is actually rapid dehydration as the fluids in your body are cooked out of you, resulting in cardiac arrest. Lovely. This, however, takes many minutes of suffering and none of that sensation of peacefulness as a consolation. Verdict, drown. Number one, experience a kick in the balls or childbirth? Ah, the age-old question, the front cover on the big book of Would You Rather. Have a baby or get kicked in the dick? Right. Pain is caused by the stimulation of nociceptors in response to damage or potential damage. Testicles are covered in them because taking a blow to the knackers, whilst bloody hilarious, is likely to cause the kind of damage that is an evolutionary no-no, infertility. Testicles are also directly attached to the stomach and the vomit centers of the brain. This makes ball kicking a visceral, full-body experience. Trust me, try it. The muscular cramps and visceral distension associated with giving birth actually produces a similar effect in a laboring woman's body. But before us blokes go piling into the comments section all, see, I told you it was just as bad, in addition, there's all the stretching and tearing associated with, you know, pushing a human head out of a vagina. The common argument is that being kicked in the nuts is worse as it's a more frequent occurrence. If we're going down this route, let's run the numbers. Let's assume that the average labor lasts for eight to 10 hours and the average amount of downtime from being kicked in the dick is around 20 minutes. And the average number of children for most women in the West is two. This would mean that a bloke would have to be fully low blowed between 48 and 60 times in a lifetime to match up. Now, without wanting to sound too judgmental, if you're getting kicked in the dick 60 times, you might want to consider improving your social skills. Verdict? Get kicked in the nuts, obviously. Oh, God! Oh! Oh, no! Oh! Oh, oh, oh I've made a terrible mistake.